Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Stuff Look Good in Unity. Today, we're going to tackle an effect seen in No Man's Sky, the topographic scanner. Before we get into it though, let's get one thing out of the way. This game is quite polarizing, some people are loving it, others hating it. Hello Games got a lot right and a lot wrong. They also had to deal with an outrageous amount of hype that basically no game could live up to. I'm personally enjoying my time in this lonely universe simulator, but I absolutely understand why others are not. But right now, we're just talking about a cool visual effect from the game, so please, keep it civil in the comment section. Alright, let's get down to business. The effect is a colored wave radiating out from a point. It is a hard white edge and a multicolored trail. There are horizontal bars that seem to stay fixed based on screen space coordinates rather than moving with 3D positions. If we scan near the water, we can see that the effect passes through it undisturbed. We can assume this is because the effect is using depth-based information, which transparent geometry typically doesn't affect. There's not a whole lot else to analyze about the effect, the real meat is in the implementation, so let's get to it. A lot of my previous shader case studies have focused on per object effects, but this one is actually going to be implemented as an image effect. If we were implementing this per object, we could compute a distance from a point, say the origin of the scan, to the world space position of the fragment which we pass along from the vertex shader. Then we'd have a value with which we could generate a color to add to the object. But when we have millions of triangles, there's no way we want to add a second pass to a bunch of materials and redraw the whole scene with an extra distance calculation and then additively blend that over top of the existing objects. So instead, we'll go with the full screen image effect and compute the scan color for each pixel of the finished scene render instead of rendering millions of triangles the second time. Now the problem becomes, we don't have access to world space coordinates of each fragment like we do when we're working per object, but we do have access to the depth buffer. Here's a pretty cool trick for reconstructing world space position values using the depth buffer. This clever hack is used in the built-in global fog image effect as well. Way back in Shaders 102, I talked about how image effects were like rendering one big quad to the whole screen. Well, what we can do is store a vector in each of the four corners of this quad. This vector is a ray casting from the camera's position to the four corners of the far clip plane. We'll set this up as an additional texture coordinate to be passed through our vertex shader. The fragment shader will then receive an interpolated version of the ray just like it would a regular texture coordinate. Then we can sample the depth value at the given fragment and use this helper function from the Unity CG include file. This gives us a value between 0 and 1 for the depth. If we multiply this linear depth value by our interpolated ray, we'll get a direction in world space pointing from the camera towards the far plane, but with a magnitude equal to the distance to the sampled fragment. To finish off, we can simply add the camera's world space position to our calculated direction and BAM! We've got a world space position value for every pixel in our image effect. You might be asking why we don't just use the depth value as is, and well, we certainly could. But by reconstructing world space values, we'll be able to easily decouple the camera's position from the scan's origin, and moving our camera midway through a scan won't affect the appearance of the scan. This also lets us do radial calculations as if our scan was a large sphere expanding, instead of a linear sweep towards the horizon. Now that we have a world space value, we can compare that against the origin point of our scanner. I use the transform and feed its position into the shader as a material property. Next, we need to actually do something with our computed distance value. We'll add a branch to our fragment shader that checks if the distance value is between a range defined by a fixed distance and a width value. If we return 1 from inside this branch, we'll get a ring of white for values that return true. In this demo, I'm using a couple more material properties to control width and distance, and a quick script to increase the distance over time. I suspect that however No Man's Sky has implemented the effect, they accelerate how fast the distance increases, such that the further away the scan is from the origin, the more quickly it spreads. But for now I'm just going to have the distance value increase at a fixed rate. We'll take the difference between the fixed distance and the fragment's distance, dividing out the width of the scan to get a value between 0 and 1, which when returned looks like this. Taking 1 minus our normalized difference, and adding that to the color sampled from the scene render texture, gets us a simple white scan with a hard outer edge and a fading trail. At this point we've got the core of the effect working, but let's cover the fancy coloring and the horizontal bars and really recreate what it looks like in No Man's Sky. For the coloring, I've set up three material properties which we'll use to create a nice gradient. Here's my coloring code which basically just mixes the three colors together using our difference value as the lerp function's weight. I've also included a variable that raises the weight on the edge color by some power to concentrate the leading edge color at the edge. 
adding our computed color to the color sampled from the screen gives us a pretty looking trail. Alternatively, you could use the normalize difference value to sample a small texture which contains a predefined gradient you'd like to use. I'm also using the difference value as a multiplier on how visible the trail is and not using the color's alpha values at all, but you could easily include those extra multiplications if desired. Next, let's add the horizontal bars. I use this repeating absolute function with rounding based on the UVY position. You could also use a repeating texture sample or some other fancy function here. Multiplying a color by our horizontal bar value and adding that to our scanner color, we get screen space horizontal lines. And with that, we're basically finished with the effect, but there's one issue to correct here. When our scanner reaches the camera's far plane, it just keeps going. This is because our image effect is being drawn after the skybox. There's a couple of ways we could fix this, but by far the easiest way is to simply add this inequality to our branch. Remember that our depth values range from 0 to 1, where values of 1 are at the far plane. So, if we filter out values where the sample depth is 1 or greater, we won't end up drawing onto the skybox. So that's our scanner effect working nicely. If you wanted to reveal waypoints the same way No Man's Sky does, you can just do some comparisons based on the same distance and origin being fed into the shader. The logic side should match the visual representation perfectly. That's just another way in which our efforts to reconstruct world space positions have been rewarded. The effect works nicely on both deferred and forward rendering, though of course you get the depth texture for free when using the deferred rendering path. Also note that I'm using the image effect opeg attribute on the on render image function. This means that the effect will run after opeg geometry and the skybox have drawn before transparent objects. I did this mainly because I was using the global fog in my scene, which is also an opeg effect, and I wanted the fog to be drawn on top of the scan such that the scan would fade off into the horizon. This scene was put together using entirely free and built-in assets, so I'll include it with the shader code as well as my demo script that lets you start a scan with a mouse click. Shout out to all my truly awesome patrons whose support continues to overwhelm me. Thank you for keeping the dream alive. And as always, thank you all for watching. Keep on making those video games.